So when most people think of Mars, they tend to think of things like this. And this is probably the driver behind the entire NASA Mars exploration program. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that Mars is interesting beyond the search for Martians. We have tons of ideas about what Martians might have been like or might be like thanks to science fiction. Folks like H.G. Wells and Edgar Rice Burroughs. But a lot of these ideas were actually inspired by, of all things, a map. This map was created in the late 1800s by an Italian astronomer named Giovanni Schiaparelli, who spent a decade looking at Mars through a little telescope and sketching all of the things that he thought he saw on the surface. Then an American astronomer, Percival Lowell, saw this map in Italian, mistranslated the word canali, which is the Italian word for channels, to mean artificially constructed canals. And from this, he got the idea that Mars was inhabited by intelligent aliens. And in Lowell's mind, the aliens on Mars had built this vast canal system to transport water from the polar regions down to the more desert areas near the equator. So he thought the dark areas in the maps were vegetation and the lighter areas were the deserts. This wasn't widely accepted by the science community at the time, but it did resonate very heavily with popular culture. We really liked the idea of aliens on Mars, and so we sent a series of missions there to look for them. The first successful mission was Mariner 4, which flew by Mars in 1964, and it didn't see any aliens. In fact, it didn't really see much of anything very interesting at all. It saw this heavily cratered drab landscape that kind of looks a lot like the moon. No offense to any moon researchers here. So then we flew by two more times in the 60s with Mariner 6 and 7, and we still didn't see anything very interesting. So our illusions and dreams of Mars had been completely shattered over the course of three missions until we got there with Mariner 9. And just by happenstance of the trajectories that Mariners 4, 6, and 7 flew past Mars, they happened to miss everything interesting on the surface of the planet. But Mariner 9 went into orbit around Mars, and so we were able to map the entire thing. And we found water-carved channels dotted across the surface, towering volcanoes that are larger than anything we have on Earth, and evidence for catastrophic floods that are orders of magnitude than, bigger than anything we can fathom here. So then we decided to land on Mars in 1976 with the Viking 1 and 2 landers. And these were each equipped with an experiment specifically designed to look for signs of metabolism in the dirt, so signs of life. And it didn't find any. So we changed the approach to follow the water because we thought, well, that might tell us something about the history of life on Mars because on Earth, anywhere there's water, we typically find some kind of life that has managed to thrive there. And over the past 30 years, we've found a ton of water all over Mars in different forms. We've found ice that is buried under the subsurface and has been excavated by new impact craters. And we even have briny saltwater flows that might be happening on the surface of Mars today. We've also found organics on the surface with the Curiosity rover and a lot of the key ingredients that are necessary for life as we know it to thrive. But despite all of this, we still haven't found life on Mars today and we haven't found any evidence of ancient alien civilizations. But that's okay, because even if there were never Martians, this still tells us something about humans and our context in the solar system, something about the history of our own civilization. If there was ever life on Mars, if we look at the history of Earth like a clock and compare the history of Mars to that, the time that Mars was warm and wet and conducive to life as we know it ended long before multicellular life ever arose on Earth. So if Mars ever had life in the time that it was habitable, that would have been pretty early on in the solar system, and it probably died off as the climate shifted to this dry, arid, polar desert that we have today. And if there's life on Mars today, it has to be really different from anything that we're used to seeing here on Earth, because it needs to survive some really harsh radiation, some really cold temperatures, and drier conditions than any environment that we have here on Earth. Drier than Antarctic dry valleys, drier than even the top of Mount Everest. So we know that Mars had water and the chemical conditions for life to thrive in the past. Mars was habitable, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was ever inhabited. But even if there were never Martians, it still tells us something important about Earth. 
If you had two planets that are neighbors in the solar system that had the right conditions for life and life arose on one but not the other, what happened? Why is Earth the anomaly here? And I think that that's the more interesting answer maybe than little green men, even if it means that we're alone.